let them know it's Halloween. Hit it! I wouldn't change places with anyone tonight. We'll carve pumpkin faces and watch the witches fly. Every human heart will shudder Every soul will shake with fear Tonight, the creepiest Tonight, the scariest Tonight, the most wonderful How's everybody doing out there, man? So, Scarefest 2022. I was thinking back about this, and I have not been to a Scarefest since 2019. Pre, I guess pre-pandemic for sure, yeah. And man, oh man. It was a show, I'll say that. So, there's some really cool stories and a bunch of shout outs and I'm just going to like walk y'all through everything that I saw during the show and things like that too. Cuz there's a lot to kind of uh unpack as the young kids say. But let's get a let's get a look on here of who we've got in the chat. Looks like my boy Garrett's in here. Good to see you Garrett. Uh-oh. There's some Uncle Rad drama apparently. Uncle Rad uh texted him and said he was denied entry. He's furious and he's blaming it on me. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, we'll get into that because I think I know why that probably happened. Crash is in here. The man, just simply the man, 0776. He says, what's up, bulls? Rob Zill is here. Movie Junkie John. Uh, Rob Zill, Orbit DVD was there and I bought something from there. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. And actually, because I just wanted to buy something and I kind of like I don't know what you would call it like I, I meant to more formally introduce myself and I just kind of like pushed out because I don't know that's how I am at this point in my life uh raised on fiction says that uncle bill rules thank you raised on fiction I appreciate that Dylan's in here and he says hey good to see you Dylan I'm glad you're in here uh David Lopan's in here 
Indeed. He says, great song to dance naked to. Crash 517 says, Uncle Bill rules. He agrees. Okay. Uh, Ryan's in here. Carlos is in here. Hey, Carlos. Hey, man. And Tonus and Antonus Andro Androidius. A Antonus Androidus. Antonus Andro. Yeah, whatever. Anthony's in here. Carter Dedention. Scratch Beer now. The Michigan Dipper. Good to see you, man. Alexander Lumberjack. Steve Mares. Wrath and Mortis. No, I'm sorry. That's Wraith. Chris V. Dick Shark. I didn't see Dick Shark. Bods is on here. I haven't talked to you in forever, man. I'm doing good. I hope you're doing good. All right. So, um, just right off the bat, like, we got to the show. I took the whole family to the show. And, you know, we're parked. There's not that many people there. There's a lot of people there, but, like, not like a Saturday or anything like that. And we're going up the steps. By the way, um, they've completely changed that convention center now, like from the last time that I was there till now, it's like the outside of it's been completely remodeled. The inside of it looks like it's been complete. When I walked in, I was like, what the frig? Like, cause I'm used to walking into that place and like immediately you have to go down this like escalator triage, like three or four different escalators and you have to walk around all these different corridors and shit like that. And there was none of that anymore it was just like you walked in and you just went straight to the left and like you were in the convention center which is like a thousand times better setup by the way but i mean i just wasn't expecting it to be honest uh i'm glad for it and to be honest pretty much everything was set up better this year um from the the vendors they open up the whole convention center that place is huge like, i had no idea because before they used to only use like a portion of it and you know you you could easily walk down it in i'd say like 30 minutes something like that this took me two hours this took all of us like two hours to walk the entire thing there was probably 10 rows like across and, like, they probably went up, I don't know how far, man. It seemed like a damn half a mile or something. Um, and it was just much more impressive than, than I had remembered it being from in the past. But, anyway, first part of my story. I don't know how to tell this story without, like, getting heat, for maybe, possibly. But I'll just tell it. Um, so, we're walking up the the steps like as you first walk into the to the convention center and there's a guy coming down and i guess he notices us me and he's like hey man he's like i know you he's like do you uh he's like do you want these and i'm like <laughs> i don't I, I feel weird like saying what he asked if i wanted but needless to say I wanted them and we all got in to the show very quickly. Um, also, uh, I sold a lot of stuff at this show. Uh, had had the table set up and got a lot of uh, merchandise that we sold. Anyway, so we all got in quickly and that blew my mind because that was like the first thing that happened like we didn't even like you know have a chance to like walk up the steps and so <laughs> we walk in and we're just kind of like trying to get our bearings and everything and looking around and um so i guess pretty much the first thing that we we ended up like um around the celebrities pretty much first so i'm walking up and down the celebrity rows there 
And Jesus Christ, they had a lot of people there, man. So, like, on the far left at the very end, you had, like, your main guys. And you had, like, Lance Hendrickson was down there. And then you had Robert England. And, first of all, I didn't, almost didn't recognize Lance Hendrickson because he's got, like, a full beard. Like, a white, scruffy, homeless dude beard. And he just does, he, he, he looks, he looks... He looks old. I mean, he is old, but I mean, he really looks old. And he, he seemed like a super nice guy. Like, I want to stress this point right up front. I didn't get any autographs. I didn't go around any. I mean, I went around all the celebrities, but I didn't get any autographs. So I don't give a shit about that anymore. And that just the fact of that made this like a thousand times more enjoyable than it ever was before. So anyway... I'm walking around, and uh, we walk up to Robert England, and he's got a station where apparently they're calling, like, numbers over the PA. So they're like, you know, if you've got C, then come over and, you know, get in line for Robert England. So that's how they were doing So he, he always had, like, a kind of a small line, I guess, in comparison, but that's because they were calling, like, people's numbers, or letters, I should say, to come over there and, like, get in, get in his line. So that's how they were doing that. And then I, there's another line, like, right off to the right of where he was. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? Because it went, like, all the way around and, like, down this way. It's Kane Hodder. And for the love of God, Kane Hodder is at that show every year. Like, there can't be that many people that have not met Kane Hodder yet. I mean, it's been 10 years in a row almost, I'm thinking, that he's been at that show. Like, who the fuck is still meeting? Like, there's a lot. That, he probably had the longest line of anybody. Like, who the fuck is still meeting Kane Hodder at this point? But anyway, uh, across from him was C.J. Graham, who, like, um, directly across from him. He also had, like, a really big line. I was kind of like, um, oh, I've been to Whorehound probably 10 times, Adam. Oh, you're talking about Bombastic. Oh, yeah. So, C.J. Graham had like a... I guess it's just the Jason thing. Like, just people just want to meet anybody that was Jason. So, that's kind of where that went. So, then you went down this other row. Uh, and there, like I said, there's probably four, like, rows. And all of them, like, had celebrities down through them. So, we walked, we walked every row in the place. So, we were walking down through there. Um, and... There was like, I mean, I saw all the people from Friday the 13th, like Terry Kaiser, you know, Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's and uh, Kevin Spiritus and like all the people from part three were there. Um, and, you know, it was cool just to kind of see like all those people again. Seen some of them before and some of them I'd never seen. Uh, saw Linnea Quigley and Tuesday night. And, uh, yeah. Um... I, I don't want to even... Uh, it, it was fine. I love both of them. God bless them. This is the part that kind of solidified this. I've, I've had this thought for a long time. I haven't met Felissa Rose or talked to her really since 2005. The 2005 Horror Find. It's either 2004 or 2005. I can't remember which one. But she was like super, super nice then. And we just walked by her, and she was sitting in the floor of the convention center playing with, like, some little girl who had come over there. And she was just, like, playing with... And she looked like a damn preschool teacher or something. Like, she was just kind of, like, you know, uh, playing with toys and stuff with her and just talking and stuff. And, I mean, I don't think there was anybody in her line, which is weird because, I mean, I would have thought that. But, like, she was just kind of just hanging out. And so she's always been, every time I've ever met her or heard anybody talk about her, like, it was, it's always been amazing. <laughs> what the fuck? Cool dooters in here, bulls. <laughs> Picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. 
That is me. So a lot of people are saying that I I didn't think this show was as, uh, any more of a clusterfuck than any other show I've been to, if I'm being honest. I mean, it's a clusterfuck in and of the fact that it's a huge building and there was like a ton of people there. But in terms of the way that they had everybody like set up, I mean, they were doing good with the Robert England thing. They were doing good with the, the Kane Hodder thing. Like they had all that stuff as organized as you can. And they had a ton of room, so... I mean, dude, I've been to like, I've been to, you know, those Louisville shows and I've been to some whorehounds that were just as fucking like, you know, crazy as this one. So I can't say that it was any worse than anything I've ever been in. Um, so yeah, we walked past all those and then got past Lene Quigg was like at the end of the row. She's always super nice, too. Um, and when we turned back around, came back up the other side, and it was... Jesus, I'm trying to remember who was up the who was up the final side there. There's so many people. Like, it might have been some of the Nightmare on Elm Street people. And over the PA, like, they were saying, you know, a lot of these people have to catch flights, so blah, 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 you should probably like get over to them like while you still can. And I was just like, dude, I'm never doing this again, so I'm so glad. <laughs> like, I have to worry about any of this shit. I don't care. I just like walk up to them. So it's just, like, check it out, see what they're doing. Um, and you just walk on by. And no pictures. Robert England's, I don't know if this is true or not, I think CK was telling me that Robert England's photo op was $140. If you want to do that, I mean, you do that. Even if it's half that, I just, it blow. it's a picture. It blows my mind that anybody would pay over $100 for a picture of anybody. Under any situation, really, under any circumstances. But you want to do that, man? You do it. Autographs for $120. I, man, I work. I work 40 hours a week. I don't have $120 to give to Robert England for a signature. I don't have $140 to give to him for a picture. I don't know who the fuck does. Like, you really must have to, like, you would have to save your money like you were going to fucking Disney World to do the stuff at these conventions that they want you to do. But, anyway. So we go, we move on from that. <coughs> and we're walking up. This is the best year for vendors that I've seen at Scarefest. There was, like, a thousand of these motherfuckers. And there's only a couple things I care about. So this is why... I think that it worked out. I collect figures. Sometimes I collect vinyl and uh, movies. So they had that in spades. Now, of course, they've got like your typical, you know, here's some crystals. Here's a love rock. And whatever that shit is. They've got like a million of those people too. Like and people that make like hats out of bed sheets or whatever else. Um, which God bless them. I mean, I know that's a thing and there's people that crochet and that's wonderful. I just, I, that stuff has never interested me. I'm glad that they do it. Um, but I was really, really happy to see so many different people with like movies, figures, posters, uh, vinyl. Now all the figures were insanely and stupidly overpriced as they always are at these shows. There was maybe one or two spots where I was like, okay, like I, I saw the same, like I was looking for the Elvira NECA figure and I saw the, I saw that figure four or five different places. This is the weird part about shows. You gotta, you, you gotta watch out at these shows, man. One guy had them for 65. One was like 45 and then the other two were like 40. So it was like between in a span of like probably a hundred feet. You had like all these wildly different prices on this thing. It's like, it, no, just, uh, and uh, God forbid you wanted anything that was like out of print or anything. You're going to pay like two, $300. I saw some of the, um, 
the Friday the 13th clothed NECA figures. And they were like $200, each one of them. $150, $200. Like if you wanted the one, you know, the Tater Sack Jason or Part 3 Jason, it was like, Jesus Christ. It's just... So I didn't buy any figures because I was like, I just... That's just insanely overpriced. Um, but there was a ton of people selling those. I will say that for certain. Let's get a let's get caught up on the chat here. Uh, you spent enough money on movies where they actually had to act and do stuff, yeah, you know, as to turn around and like get more. Mid level says all he could think about was how many greasy screen factories he could buy with that hundred and forty dollars. So yeah, apparently Robert England signature mark saying is one hundred twenty dollars. If you wanted a quote, it's an extra forty on top of the one. See what? It seems like to me. I really enjoyed this show. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to like put it out that I didn't enjoy this show. I think the reason I enjoyed this show is because I didn't do any of this shit that we're talking about right now. It it's they're always one up and about what they do to get money at these shows. So when we started doing it, we've talked about this many times. I'll talk about it again real quick. When we started doing conventions. You walked in. There's people. They had photographs in front of them. Sometimes they didn't. Sometimes you had to bring your own shit. It was, it was always the same design no matter what. If you brought it, if, or if you, you didn't like bring it, whatever. It was between 5 to $10. And I think the most anybody charged at that time may have been like 15 or 20 and that was like, no, Romero charged 25 I'm sorry, that was right. It didn't matter what they put on it. You took a picture at the table with them. They stood up. They always stood up as a sign of respect that you would be there to do this and to pay attention to these people who nobody gave a shit about at that time. And you went along your merry way. Now what we have... And I can remember us talking about this when this started to happen. Those professional photo op fuckers that started coming in. Just leeches, like trying to get money off of, you know, all these other people. Trying to make it seem like it's some big thing. When that happened, it was like at first 20 bucks. Then it was 30 bucks for a photo. And it was 50 bucks. Now it's like a hundred and foot, like, man, come on. Like, yeah, at some point, people have got to, like, it's either got to be that people are, like, this is, like, their Disneyland or something, where they're, like, okay, like, I'm never, there's got to be people out there that are, like, I'm never doing this again, so, or I may never get to meet this person again, so, like, I'm just going to go ahead and spend, like, you know, $150 on this photograph. But when they start charging extra to write a quote, that's pretty shitty. That's even shittier than, like, a lot of the other stuff that I've heard. Anyway. Any vintage horror posters bought as? Yes, there was like two guys that I came upon that had vintage horror posters. One of them I bought some other stuff off of. He had a Munchies poster that I was like that close to buying. But I couldn't see what he had on it. And I just was like, he had like a, a pretty good lot on the rest of his posters. So I was like, I'm not probably going to drop like 50 or 60 bucks on this Munchies poster. Um, he had some good stuff, though, in that in that lot. Like, a lot of stuff that I didn't have. Um, and he had some other stuff, too. Like, he had, like, an April Fool's Day. He had My Bloody Valentine. He had, like, a couple Friday the 13th, a couple Nightmare on Elm Street, like, original posters. Um, and he had some, he had some decent stuff, but it was pretty fucking high. Yeah, yeah, we've always talked about this. I don't care, really. I mean, because they've been getting away with this shit for like 20 years now, but everything is cash, so nobody's paying taxes. You know they ain't turning any of this stuff in on their taxes. They're making, like somebody like Robert England's making probably hundreds of thousands of dollars like doing this at different conventions. It's whatever. You better pray that nobody ever shows up and ask about that. Forty dollars extra for a quote. Uh, 
see. I didn't see Miguel Nunez. I think he was supposed to be there. I didn't see him at all. And I really didn't miss him, for being honest. It's like one of the worst people in the world to try to meet. And we've tried to meet him, so we know from experience. <coughs> oh, this is, yeah, okay. So, so we go, you know, we're going around the different, um, going around the different vendors, and the kids are getting some, like, you know, trinkets and stuff. They wanted some, like, earrings. So they got some pretty cool stuff in that way. And some just, you know, a couple T-shirts and things like that. So, um, I bought a couple of shirts from this one particular vendor that had, like, a fairly decent sale. It was, like, um, you get, like, two shirts for 45 And I'll just go ahead and show you what I bought T-shirt-wise. I got a Pet Cemetery shirt. Mm -hmm. I got my daughter a Killer Clown shirt. Uh, I got myself this one. This was a I, I wish I would have remembered the name of this vendor. I'll look it up here in a second. The Tromaville Help Club shirt, which was awesome. I've never seen this before, but like that is an amazing idea in terms of for me. I know not a lot of you know people aren't into trauma that much anymore, but that shirt and that design I loved. So I bought that. And then... Uh, Let's see, so we went around and uh, just kind of looking through the vendors and things like that and noticed that they had like a bunch of setups for different like um, uh, cars from movies and things like that. Now, I was aware that some of these um, guys charge money for you to take pictures with these vehicles. What I wasn't aware of was that there's a whole price list of like that goes up of shit that you can do in the so like for example for like fifteen dollars you can stand outside the car for twenty five dollars you can like sit in the car for forty or five dollars they'll run you over in it like It's just, some of this stuff is just depressing. And if it wasn't for the fact that, like, number one, I don't care but num about any of that shit. Or number two, like, I had the rest of my family there and they were, like, having a really great time and they were going around, like, you know, looking at all this stuff. And I would probably be pretty discouraged by the fact of, like, how they were doing the pricing for all this stuff. So they had the Jeepers Creepers truck off to, the like, the far end of the uh, left of the building. And you had to pay, like, what, like I said, there's a whole menu of prices for shit. If you want to hump the tailpipe, you had to pay like a thousand dollars. And so you walk up a little bit, and they had the Christine car, and it was behind like a giant curtain. You couldn't like see it, you could see it like from the side, but you couldn't like get in front of it and take a picture or anything like that. And they had it set up to where there was a picture of the old dude that he meets that owns the car, you know. Uh, I don't know if it's like a cardboard cutout or something of that guy. So I guess when you're like standing there, you could like get a, a picture with it. They make it look like you're standing with that old guy or something. You know, the dude from Home Alone. <laughs> oh, these people just kill me with this shit. Oh. Anyway, let's get a couple comments. I'll tell you the rest of this shit. It's hilarious. Uh, the hell, oh, thank you, though, Garrett. So, let's see. For $60. For $60, you can have sexual relations with the muffler of the Christine car. Uh they were trying to hide that Corey was inside of Christine. So, 
we walked past all that and they did have a pretty cool setup of um there was like these two circus performers that were doing like this aerial kind of show thing um which was pretty cool so we stayed and watched that for a little bit kind of the thing where they're like up on the rope and they're suspended and they're doing all the like aerial dances and stuff so we watched that for a while we went past the christine curtain and i'm trying to remember they had something else too so they had like the jeepers creepers truck they had the christine thing and they had some other something you could take a picture with that was like i'm sure fifty dollars or something like that what what surprised me though was that jeepers creepers truck had a line like a pretty good sized line and it's just like yeah just lining up to take my money here you go like take a picture in front of it what i can't imagine paying somebody to take a picture in front of anything let alone like paying somebody more money to take a picture in it uh, here's you know thirty dollars I'm going to sit down in this thing. The mystery machine. That was it. Yeah. Thank you for that, Bombastic. So the mystery machine was there. No one gave a shit about the mystery machine. <sighs> yes. Like this stream for the simple fact that I, 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 in fact, did attend a convention. So anyway. Uh, walked up to... Um, the main back, so after you pass the mystery machine and all that stuff, we got to the main back. There was a guy there that had like what looked to be um, like a, um, looked like a high school science teacher's shop. He had like a bunch of dead like butterflies and lizards and snakes and shit. Kind of like a curiosity shop, so we walked past that. That was all right. And we go up a little bit and turn the corner there and we're like at the back and... There's like a one of those cheap poster places where you can buy like the you know twenty four by thirty six to get signed and stuff, and then in the main back I see Orbit DVD, so that was like one of the first the other first places that I stopped, and I was like, dude, I've got to buy something off this guy because this guy is like killer, and he always kind of like helps helps us out. He puts our stuff out and like, um, he's got decent prices on everything, and he's always just seems like a super cool guy and he was by the way so i walk up to him and um yeah shout out to orbit dvd um walk up to him and i'm like um looking around and he had um he had all kinds of stuff he had the the tenebrae special edition three disc set the one with all the trimmings and stuff he had the regular ones he had like a bunch of umbrella stuff, a bunch of imprint stuff, 88 film stuff. Um, he had some VHS tape. He had a Martin VHS tape that I like came one hair buying that too. It was like 40 or 50 bucks. I'm just like, because we just talked to Felsher about Martin and all that. Uh, I really wanted to buy it, but I pushed out at it. Um, but I walked up to him and uh, this is what I ended up buying. I had no idea this was out, to be honest with you. Um, but I picked up the, uh, umbrella version of Martyrs, which is region free. Well, it's actually region A, B, or C. I don't know if that's considered region free or not. And I gave it to him and, you know, I was like, here, uh, this, you know, it's checking out or whatever. And he goes, oh, he goes, man, are you ready for this? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, are you ready for this ride that you're getting ready to be on? And I'm like, uh, you mean with the movie? And he's like, yeah. And I, he's like, man, this is this is something that, you know, you can't unsee. And I'm like, oh, I've already seen it like several times. I was like, we reviewed it when it came out. I don't know when this movie came out, but it's probably 2007 or eight, somewhere in that range. And I was, I was just talking to him about it. I was like, when I watched it, I said, back when I first watched it, I was in my 20s. And um, I was like, it was one of the few movies that ever like seriously impacted me. Right after I got done watching, I was like, this is probably going to stay with me for a long time. And so I, I told him, I really want to go back and revisit this movie and just see if it's if it has that same impact as it did. I never told him I was the, with Dead Pit or anything like that. I pushed out on that. I don't know if he would have known if had I said that. 
uh, but we'll never know now. Anyway, super nice guy. We talked for probably five or ten minutes about the movie, and yeah, I just I knew I had to buy something from there, and a lot of the box set stuff that was a little bit higher than what I wanted to spend. So this was like twenty five bucks. So I just went ahead and got this. It's a great film, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Okay, so we walk down a little bit further. And there's people dressed up as Dracula. There's a guy dressed up as Shorty the Clown. Uh, there's a guy from dressed up as the Alec Baldwin thing from Beetlejuice. There's like any kind of cosplay that you can think of. Uh, is was there, a, <laughs> was there a dead pit discount? Shit. I had no idea. So a lot of people are shouting out over but Yeah, I'll shout them out. I'm not about, like, trying to fucking get discounts and shit on whatever. Anyway, to be honest. Uh, it's a, it really is a great family film. Uh, so we, we walk a little bit further. Like I said, there's any kind of cosplay that you can think about, which was awesome. We got, like, I've got, like, pictures I'm going to post like tons of different pictures of of the kids and stuff the critter was there that's one thing that has never changed man and i think it was the same one there's this giant like hollable critter it's probably i would say i don't know maybe six feet tall four feet wide and it's like on a platform where you can push it around and people just take pictures in front of it and that thing's been there for at least 10 years. It's been there for as long as I can remember. So we went and got a picture with the critter, and then other people came up and we got pictures with them. There was some great, like, cosplay stuff that was that was going on there. <clears throat> and I would say we probably missed the majority of the cosplay stuff because, like, we didn't go on Saturday because that was probably when the majority of it happened. So we walked down, and um, I give a shout-out to this guy, too real quick because he was super awesome and we talked for a long time i was also amazed at how cheap this guy's prices were on this stuff um i mean they weren't like he told me that he owns a vinyl shop and that's kind of what he does uh so he had some vinyl he had some figures and he had some posters he was a huge horror fan but he runs like a primarily runs a vinyl shop and the name of the shop that went into was Glamgoria and I bought two vinyls off of him because I, I, I just had to on this one um, for one thing I bought it because it's going to be out of print if it's not already out of print um, but for another thing I bought it because the price on it I don't know if you can see that or not is $36 and 66 cents so it's 3666 <laughs> So I had to do that. Uh, so I wanted to get that. It's hard to see with all this, these lightings and shit. But anyway, he was talking about this and how this recently got repressed and it hadn't been like pressed in, I don't know, 20 years or something like that. But that guy was amazing to talk to. So I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll just go ahead and pick up the Rosemary's Baby uh, thing too, which was only 35 bucks. That's out of print. I'm almost positive it's out of print on Waxwork. Um, but that guy had the... He had the Nightmare... Um, the Nightmare on Elm Street TV series vinyl that's out of print. I'm fairly certain that's out of print, too. And it was like 30-some bucks. So he was not like... He was not jacking prices up for shit that was out of print. He told me that he, like... Um, um, he just buys tons of this stuff. And then he just takes it and like sells it until it all runs out. So uh, he was like, I'm, the only thing he said he jacked the price up on was the Killer Clowns vinyl because he said it went out of print like immediately. So he had that for like 50 bucks, which I still don't think is that bad. Considering that like, I'd say if you went on eBay right now, it'd be anywhere between 60 to 80. And that's just guessing. But I got those two, got those two vinyls. Uh, let's see. 
Everybody saying that the critter is the same critter, yeah. The critter was a, a group meeting point of reference, yeah. Yeah, Rob, that was back in the day, like when we were going, that was there too. What's going on, Jim Carr? I've been listening to you guys since the beginning of the Dead Pit Radio days. Glad to see you all still bringing up the great content. You guys are definitely the OGs. I keep trying to tell people that. I don't know if they believe me or not, but we, we really are, though. I appreciate that. When I met England at Scarefest in 2017, he was only charging 90 We met him. Oh, God, we met him. I don't know the year now, but I think he was charging. When we met him, he was charging 50 I think. The last time that I met him, I'm fairly certain he was charging $50. And CK was there, so he can tell me. I'm thinking that's how much it was. <laughs> Friday night last year had nothing but bootlegs. Yeah, there was a bootleg guy here, man. I was like, wow, you don't see this shit anymore. This is awesome. So I'm walking by like the, like this table, and there's this row of like seemingly Blu-rays, and I'm like, wow, this guy's got everything. It's like one of those things where you kind of have to like look at it closer and you look real close and it's like oh the ink is kind of like faded and the paper's not very good quality this is a good old-fashioned bootlegger which you don't see you know you do not see good old-fashioned bootlegging going on that much at shows anymore but there's guys there Oh, that's awesome. The Rosemary's Baby is, is between $70 and $90. Yeah, it's $35. Um, like I said, he, he had them priced, I guess, what you would basically pay for them. Like, I mean, if you were buying them off the site, really. Uh, okay, so we go walking a little bit further. Um, I go back around because I kept looking at this. So the same guy, let me see if I can find his name on here because he was pretty awesome, too. He was talking about trauma movies and Lloyd Kaufman and like asked me if I'd ever met Lloyd Kaufman. I said, yeah, I met him twice. And the first time was great. And the second time was like one of the worst convention experiences I've ever had. Um, but let's see. Oh, God, who did I buy this off of? Shit. I don't know. I don't know who this was. But um, maybe somebody on here will know because he's the guy, he's the only guy that had the trauma shirts. So if you know who the uh, who had the trauma shirts on here, uh, the, the health club shirt, then let me know. But he also had this, and I went back around and bought this because we just did a show, and I thought this was fucking awesome, and it was five bucks. So it's a pin set of Romero movies of like all the dead movies, all the decent dead movies anyway. Uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, and Land of the Dead. And in the middle is just like a George A. Romero button. So that was five bucks. So I was like, that's pretty fucking cool. Just the setup and everything. Um, and, you know, when, when I bought that, like I said, we were talking about Uncle Lloydy. And uh, people just, it's weird because you just have different experiences with that guy. Like when he's on. You can have a great experience with him, and if he don't want to fuck with you, he's just not the type of guy that, like, cares. I mean, he'll just, he's just not. Like, you could be standing there, if he's talking to, like, somebody else, he'll talk to him for 30 or 40 minutes, and you're just kind of screwed. Uh, CK says, the problem is these people that pay these crazy prices, you can't fault the sleds if they get away with it. Yeah, I mean, at this point... You know, I don't think there's much more that anybody could say about the prices. Like, if you want to do that shit, that's on you. Bods wants to know if we will have a uh, dead pit, have a booth next year. I'd like to, I was, I was telling Garrett, I'd like to do something where, like, we all got together and, you know, we got together and, like, the old listeners, the new listeners, the new watchers or whatever you want to say, got together and just like did something like that where we could all like hang out and kind of like take pictures and stuff before all of us die basically. 
Um, speaking of which, I knew I would regret this, and I knew I would regret, like, because I knew I was going to have to tell this story at some point. And I should have, man. I know how this should have turned out, but it didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to. Um, so while I was there, and we were just kind of standing around, and the kids were looking at stuff, um, I saw Cody L.L., now, for any people not familiar with Cody LL, he's the one that, he was like one of our biggest listeners back in the day of the original show, and he just stopped, like, all of a sudden just stopped listening to the show. I And that's the thing, I've never known why. And I saw him there, instantly recognized him, he was walking around looking at some stuff and I was like, in my head, I'm like, do I want to go up to him and be like, hey, because one of two things is going to happen. Either he's going to be like, hey, man, like, uh, you know, yeah, 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 life happens or he's going to be like, fuck you. Y'all said shit or something. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the reaction was going to be. But I had that moment where I was like, I, I, I don't know what to do. Do I go up to him? No. So I didn't go up to him. And I kind of just watched him disappear into the uh, into the distance. Um, but basically, yeah, he looks exactly the same as he did 10 years ago. And I regret that. I should have just been like, should have just fucking nutted up and went over there and just been like, hey, how you doing, man? Like, what's been going on? Where you been? <laughs> But it was good to see the dude anyway, at least. Dead Pit Con 2023. That would be something I would like to do. Yeah, I mean, the bathroom situation was really fucking stupid there. That's one thing I will say. Like, people were waiting in line for a really long time for the bathroom, which shouldn't, you know... I can imagine what that was like on Saturday. That had to be fucking insane. Did he, though? I mean, I honestly can't remember at this point, Rob. I mean, I know we gave him some shit for, like, just how long he stood at the table and stuff like that, but Jesus Christ, he was there for, like, three hours one time. I don't know. I just miss Cody. Uncle Bill, how were the vendor prices on the original posters? Not good. Um, I mean, some of them were okay. Like, for example, they had an April Fool's Day poster that was 60 bucks. Their Friday the 13th stuff, like they had a, um, they had like, you know that shitty Friday the 13th part four poster that's just like text? They had that, and they wanted like 80 bucks for that. Uh, I was just kind of amazed at how much those were. And I looked through a lot of them trying to find something like to buy where I was like, okay, I can buy this and feel halfway decent about myself. But those posters, that was really, really high. Wish that we had, to, I wish that we did too, man, to organize a convention the right way. That would be amazing. I'd love to do a show like that. So anyway, uh, we're wandering around. The kids are buying some earrings, some necklaces, some uh, Stranger Things related stuff. And as kids will do. And um, I just popped into this little like, because there's a million of, of the little uh, stores that had a combination of like figures and Blu-rays and things like that. But only one really that I saw that had any like uh, vinegar syndrome stuff that kind of like confused me because I we went up and down those aisles and I only saw one dude who had any kind of vinegar syndrome stuff so it immediately caught my eye because I see those slip covers and it's like complete you know they look completely different than anything else so I knew that you know I was going over there so I go over there and um uh, just looking through the vinegar syndrome stuff and he had some great prices on that stuff some of that stuff was out of print but it was still you know 30 or 40 bucks and i just had already spent like a fortune so uh i didn't go in for it but um had some great prices 
and I've got him down here as Blu-ray Innovations, but he had another name for his store. It was like a horror store. Um, and I wish that I would have like, I, w I wish I would have been more kind of like cognizant of what all these names were, but Blu-ray Innovations is what it's listed as here. So he was just kind of standing around there and I didn't think anything else of it. And uh, I just asked him, you know, if he took credit cards because I found something that I've been looking for for a really, really long time and it was fairly cheap. And um, he was like, yeah, we take cards. And I was like, shit, all right. So I'm going to have to buy this now. And I got the big box set, Last House on the Left, with the three different cuts of the film. So it's got the unrated cut, the Krug and Company, and all rated cuts, and the Last House on the Left original soundtrack with the poster and the book and everything like that. And I've been looking for that for a long time. So anyway, as I'm buying this, the guy's like, hey man, I, like, I really love the stuff that you guys are putting up on YouTube. And I was like, oh, like you watch it. I was like, thanks, man. That's really nice. And um, yeah, it, I, so a couple of different people actually like recognize this, which was cool. So a big shout out to the dude from Blu-ray Innovations and big shout out for actually getting this. Um, I love this set. I love this movie. If you don't have this movie i've got the regular version of this like the just the single blu-ray but i had to get this um so went up from there and um we were just kind of looking around and some places had like not, there were no places like fright rags or you know like um cavity colors or gutter grubs i didn't see anything like that um no t-shirt places that were like well known or anything like that and i didn't see any like other than orbit i didn't see any like I, there was no like synapses or severins or vinegar syndromes or anything like which is wild to me because that is a huge fucking show like that's got to be like one of the biggest shows in terms of just the how like big that building is and how many vendors and stuff are set up in it so i don't know, I don't know. um but none of those guys were set up so most of the shirts and stuff and like i bought or, and the blu-rays and stuff i bought were just off like secondhand vendors Well, well, that's the thing. Like, yeah, I've seen that set, and I don't mind to tell what I paid for it. That set is expensive, so I paid forty for it. I didn't think that was that bad. Uh, I've tried to find that damn thing forever, so I was just kind of like, whatever. It's here. I'm here. Let's party. But also, like, um, the mayor says, now I have to go and tell everybody that I'm a good person. I like that movie. It's got a lot of hard to swallow stuff in it and it's really hard to watch. So I'm a good person. Uh, I just want you to know that, that I actually, I'm a good person and I like that movie as well. Uh, uh, Ryan says most of those guys are at bigger cons. I think the closest thing those guys come here is Whorehound and Mad Monster. Um, yeah, I, I guess I could see that. <laughs> That's right, Garrett. <laughs> you like it, but you're a good person. Keep that in mind that we like these movies, but we're also good people. Ebert gave, uh, last session, he did, yeah. It's an effective movie, you gotta say that. Yeah, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to run into Synapse so bad just because I want to talk to Don May because I don't ever get a chance to see him anymore. Like the times when we did see him, you're right, was when we went to like Whorehound shows or I think one time he was in Louisville. I know he was in Louisville one time because he was like, yeah. It's just, just needless to say, there's some funny stuff that went on at that show. That's when they didn't have any air conditioning and like the hotel was a wreck and everything, and. Um, I just remember some hilarious shit, but I would love to meet up and like, 
Love to be at a show with Felsher and like Don May. A lot of those people. T-shirt Joe would be great. Like I just don't know where that show would be anymore because a lot, like T-shirt Joe, I think only does shows in Texas now. And I think like you all were saying, like Don May, Synapse only do feel, only like do the big big like whorehounds and stuff like that. But anyway. No, that's just an original Child's Play. It's a Child's Play video poster, Predminator. It's not uh, part two. It's the first one. Um, right now, guys, Movie Junkie John, and this is true, has got the Amazon's got a sale on uh, Screen Factory and Arrow stuff. It's it's decent. It's not as good as the the big sale at Screen Factory had. Anyway, okay, so. The other thing, too, was the uh, food court was set up completely different than it was uh, the times that we went to the show. So the food court used to be, like, you had to completely go out of the show, go off to the right, past the 4,000, like, escalators, like, fucking from Labyrinth or something, and, like, go down the this hallway to get to the food court. Now, the food court is actually, like, to the left... Like, there's this little area to the left there where you're still inside the show and everything, but there's just, like, a food court set up over there. So that was, like, a huge improvement over the way that it used to be, really. Um, pretty much everything was a huge improvement over the old Scarefest shows. There's there's a lot more room. Even though there was a ton of people, even still on Sunday, there was a lot more room. The The vendors were a lot better than they had been. Um, I thought the way that they had the celebrities set up, they probably, the problem was they had too many celebrities. There's just no way that they could take all those people, there were so many of them, and have it to where they wouldn't have lines that would be kind of like intersecting with one another. Because they had them like set up, like here's one row with celebrities, here's another row with celebrities, with probably like 10 feet apart. So they're go you're gonna run into all that shit, which would be I imagine on Saturday, which was a nightmare to walk through. Because normally what you do is you just have like a back row of celebrities and that's it. And then people form the lines like one way or another. Yeah, celebrities. And um but with this it's like they're kind of crisscrossed. Um so I can imagine that if there really wasn't anybody there when I was there, like to meet a lot of these people, I could have walked up to any, any Friday the 13th person, any Nightmare on Elm Street person. I could have walked up to Lance Henderson. There was only like one person in, like in front of me. And I, if I wanted to, but I don't want to pay $80 or how much ever it is, but I'm just saying like there wasn't anybody in line when I was there for any of those. The only people that had a line were Robert England, Kane Hodder and CJ Graham. The ones that I saw, like everybody else, you could have just like walked right up to. Um, I'm, I'm oddly interested in this food court review. Well, we didn't get any food from there. I'm just saying that the food court was a lot better. I think this may have been the only time, too, that I didn't get anything to drink at a uh, convention. Charlie says he was at Scarefest. And he, well, CK didn't go. I was the only one there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I was there for about three hours. Um, and I thought maybe I'd run into like um, Anthony or CHH or any of them. But like, I guess they had all gone back by the time Sunday rolled around. Was the screencast there? Shit, who was supposed to be there from Scream? I'm trying to remember if I saw anybody from Scream. I don't remember if I, I don't think I did. Yeah, man, Tuesday night was just kind of sitting there. But to wrap it up, um, I had a great time. 
I would I probably would not have had a great time would not have had a great time if I'd have gone on Saturday because being in enclosed spaces like with a lot of people where you can't barely move is not one of my favorite things but um, there wasn't that many people there uh, everybody was super nice a um, couple people like knew the show and like complimented us and that was great I got in for free 50. I got in for free 50. I, yeah, I paid, I paid money to get in. Also, uh, it was good to have the family there because like they got a lot of, uh, they got a lot of stuff themselves. And I think that they were more excited about it than anybody really. Uh, they got to dress up. They all dressed up. And a couple of people like got pictures with them and stuff too, so that was awesome. It's just like the circle of life, you know what I mean? It's like you go to shows 15 years ago, and you're just kind of there, and you're doing whatever and partying and whatnot. And fast forward 15 years, and it's basically just you know taking your own family to these shows, and they love the shows. It was cool. Um. But yeah. This is definitely true. Like, if you guys, like, are into autographs, I would 100% um, recommend you go on Sunday, from what I've seen. But, um, yeah, that's kind of my story, man. And uh, I didn't. I don't think I got anything else for myself. I think that was enough shit. Um, didn't get any autographs, don't have any interest in getting autographs, didn't get any photo ops, probably never going to do that. And I think that, honestly, if you want to have a good time with these shows, you should probably do the same, but that's just me. At this point, unless you fucking want to, like, just save like it's Christmas. Um, but yeah, for those people that were there, I mean, real quick, tell me, like, what your thoughts are with it, were of the show. Hoping to maybe go next year. My fiance has never been. She's a big horror fan. I think she'd love. It. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's what is. Are you going to come to Scarefest? There's got to be something closer, Rob. Jesus, like, um, I mean, even the one in Cincinnati would probably be closer. I mean, if you're talking about one that we could meet up at and stuff too. Charlie asked, "Did I see Pizza Well there?" No, I didn't see him there at all. I didn't see, like I said, I didn't see any of those guys. Like, I thought, surely I'm going to see somebody, but, because we were there for hours, but I didn't see anybody. If anyone is hitting up Chiller Theater this weekend, come and say what's up. Garrett will be there on Friday and Saturday. He'll be signing autographs, giving away headbands. Hit him up. <laughs> this way to have fun these shows. Yeah, that is the best way until you get in your 40s and then that shit fucking gets locked down. Justin says he prefers... To, yeah, I mean, it's like a giant warehouse. How far are we from there? Two hours. It takes about exactly two hours to get there. So it's not that bad. I, like I'm saying, I was saying earlier, I wish that we could get everybody together and just kind of, you know, do something like that. Cable's going to be there. Yeah. You know, having gone to this show and everything, I kind of feel... I kind of feel revitalized about the whole convention scene because, like I said, like, what made it so uncomfortable before was getting autographs because, number one, you never know what to say. Number two, you never know if you're bothering anybody. Number three, like, half the time, it would just be a unmemorable kind of meeting anyway and you just feel like you wasted your money. A quarter of the other half the time they're going to be fucking assholes and the other quarter are going to be like super nice and memorable. So that's what made it like I got so disheartened with it. But if you just go and you're just like 
you know, I've got my money, I'll spend it on whatever the fuck I want, and I just kind of walk around and, like, you know, it was all right. Especially the fact that uh, the entry fee was so cheap. Wink. Yeah, it's true about the headbands part. Um, Garrett is giving away headbands to anybody that comes up to him. He will sign them um, if you want to get one from him. They're the new uh, Rad Pack headbands. He's going to have them ready by that time. It blows my mind that you're excited about cons and wet seasons. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what kind of experience, because I didn't go to the last con in Louisville. I don't think that he had a very good experience at that con. Um, so maybe that was part of it, but like I didn't go to that one, so I don't know. Dude, the time to have done that would have been about 10, 15 years ago. Uh... Born to be ready to fuck with outside headbands. <laughs> so there you go. Get ready for it. The Rad Pack headbands. He's going to sign them. Commemorative editions. So, okay. Real quick shout outs uh, to everybody that I bought something from. If you're interested. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So, Glamgoria. I highly recommend for the vinyl stuff. Uh, did it a monster kitty? I don't know what that was, but we bought something off of them. I think it was for the kids. Blu ray innovations. I bought the um, last house, great guy, super solid, decent prices. Uh, coffin candy, which was a great little shop that we bought stuff for the kids. Paul Piro's, and yeah, that was it. I'm sure there might have been more that I paid cash for that I don't remember. Um, but um. Show wise on the 27th, I'm fairly certain it's on the 27th. We have the Halloween 3 show coming up, The Fall and Rise of Halloween 3, which I think is going to be amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't blame him. I don't blame CK. I've been, I was that way for. And am to a big degree still that way for years and years and years. Let's see. Oh, God. CK is smart. Yeah. They're too overcrowded and chaotic. They're stressful more than fun now. Um, yeah, it just depends on what you're doing. Your motivations for doing it, I guess, too. Oh my God, that is right. Okay. That is one thing that I did not miss about shows that was really, really bad about this show. I know that's stereotypical to say, but there was at least seven or eight times when we were walking around where we were like beside people. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, how... I mean, how do you go out like smelling just like that and just go and like ugh fuck it was bad it was real bad like and I I guess I'd forgotten about that but that is one of the hidden problems with conventions <laughs> um yeah so I don't know I don't know when the next time <laughs> not buying soaps you can save for photo off. I don't know when the next time I'll go to a show is. If I was guessing, it probably won't be until Scarefest next year. Um, but like I said, we all had a great time. I was happy that I went. Uh, a lot of cool stuff happened. And um, cons still suck. Uh, that doesn't change. Uh, celebrities are charging way too much for their autographs now. Uh, photo ops are fucking stupid. And um, the prices of everything is ridiculous. That being said, I still had a good time. So, 
until I guess the 27th when we do our Halloween show, I will catch you guys later unless I decide to do another show. And just hang in there and check us out on Dead Pit on Patreon. You can check us out on Dead Pit over at YouTube. We've got an Instagram page that desperately we need you to go to and uh, click and like and and follow and comment and all that stuff. Um, for everybody that I met down there at the con, it was awesome. I appreciate everything. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of shows still yet to come up. I think we're doing a commentary soon i don't know when that'll be out though there's lots of stuff happening um so yeah i'm just just uncle bill and i'm just here chilling by myself man there's nobody to say deadpit.com with so the show's just gonna have to end i reckon but thanks everybody for coming in it's an insane amount of people in this chat for me to just talk about a convention but i appreciate it wholeheartedly and uh, maybe i'll see you guys at a show one time i'll catch you later man Give us the thumbs up. Up your butt. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a f if you do. I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't let's, care. let's keep our community growing here on no, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you dare yeah. touch it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And click that bell. Hey, everyone. It's your old buddy, old Curly Jones. And I'm here to talk about Dead Pit over at TeamPublic.com. They got some new fucking shirts out for you. You got the Dead Pit Radio. It's time to get spooky. You got the Rad Season, the Rad Pack. Halloween Havoc. Can't go wrong with that. And some other great shirts like November 1st. You got Pit at Night and Born to be Rad Spooky. It just keeps getting fucking better and better, boss. Uncle Rad, now go on over and get these shirts now. Because they're only there for a limited time, especially the spooky ones. So get them while they're on. Right now, over at Ted Pit, TeamPublic.com. Do it now. I'm going to beat your ass. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started only $1.